All right, round two. <laughs> Thank you guys for bearing with us through all of our technical difficulties tonight, but we are here and we are live in the EXP Elite Group. I'm Jay, your experiential marketing coach. This is Chris Ferry of the Sperry Law Firm. And we're gonna be talking all things legal with regards to being a experiential marketing professional and an independent contractor. As always, guys, the EXP Elite Group was created for you. This is an open forum. This is a place where you can um, be open, be honest, discuss anything you like to uh, discuss, ask any and all questions. That's why we have the experts here. I am not an expert. So um, we are gonna go ahead and jump right into this. I'm gonna go ahead and wave to everybody. Any questions, any comments that you guys have for Chris? He is a lawyer, practicing lawyer here in the Georgia area. So ask away and we'll be sure to get to them. I already have some for him. So before we get started and get into these questions, um, let's get a little bit of background into who uh, Chris is. And we are in the goat farm here in Atlanta, so we may have a little bit of uh, foot traffic coming through our interview, but nonetheless, we're going to make it work tonight. So, Chris, uh, go ahead and just let people know, you know, give people a little bit of introduction sure. of who you are and your background. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Well, first of all, Jay, thank you very much for having me. This is, this is great. I um, always love talking about, about experiences and hopefully helping some people out along mm -hmm. the way. Um, you know, and one of the reasons we started talking is that I do have some EXP experience myself. So I uh, went to uh, college and got out of college, had no idea, no idea what I wanted to do. Went to law school because it would buy me three years to figure things out, I figured. Um, and what I figured out is I, I really didn't want to be an attorney, I thought. Um, and I got a job at Road Atlanta and I started working at a racetrack and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, I love being around the cars and <clears throat> part of what we did there is we did a lot of ride and drive. So we had car manufacturer after car manufacturer coming in. We, we started all kinds of programs. We started the Porsche driving school, uh, Porsche mm -hmm. driving experience up there, the Audi driving experience. We did all kinds of this, these great things uh, and it was wonderful. Um, went After that I went to work for Maserati and did a lot of experiential events uh, for them, mm -hmm. uh, sponsorship sales and all that kind of stuff. And by the way, all this time I was doing some legal stuff in the back, uh, you know, kind of general counsel work for the Panos Group, mm -hmm. um, you know, did a lot of contract stuff, uh, you know, for the companies that I was working for. Uh, but I wasn't an attorney. <laughs> and uh, anyway, 2008 happened to me, uh, like it happens to a lot of people, and I found myself needing to find a real job. Got back into motorsports and did that and eventually started my own agency, uh, had a 22, mm -hmm. uh, and I was doing product training, uh, doing ride and drives, uh, consumer events, uh, mostly for Maserati, Pirelli, uh, were, were the two biggest customers that we did. We did some events for, for Ferrari, we did a little Audi stuff, but it was all, it was, and it was great, <clears throat> and I loved it, um, but I, I was, I was not home a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and my first wife did not think that was a good idea. Um, and uh, so as I was sitting there, uh, now a, a divorced uh, guy, um, and I had met somebody that was uh, probably, uh, yeah, I'd outpunted my coverage, probably better than I deserved. <laughs> I, uh, I, I realized I probably needed to change in lifestyle uh, if I was going to make this work uh, the second time around. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, and I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm not as young as I used to be. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, and she reminded me, hey, you're, you're still an attorney. Uh, and so I threw out my shingle and I kind of got into that. And so it started with motorsports clients and kind of helping them with, with a lot of business transactions and corporate work. And now I've kind of gotten into restaurants and done a lot of work with them too. So, mm -hmm. so there you go. So being that you worked on the field side, so ESPs, mm -hmm. this is a treat because we have someone who understands <laughs> you know, what it's like to work in the industry and to go through some of the pain points that we're going to discuss tonight. But um, being that you worked as a product specialist, you worked um, as a agency owner, you worked directly with clients. Right. What, let's just start the good, what did you enjoy about working <laughs> in the experiential marketing industry? Well, I mean, what I love the most is, you know, you're going to work but you're not working, you're having a great time, mm -hmm. you're getting out there, you know, everybody in the world, when you go and you say, hey, what do you do for a living? And you start to answer that question, mm -hmm. you're like, oh my God, how do you do that? How can I do that? Yeah. Right, how many, you know, it got to be so bad, I didn't even want to tell people what I did, mm -hmm. right? Cause I, you know, I, I just didn't, you know, talk about it. Yeah, yeah, didn't want to talk about it. Um, you know, so, and it, it was terrific, you know, and, and when you have a job and you're sitting in a cubicle, 
but you're sitting at a, looking at a computer every day, mm -hmm. like I am now, <laughs> you can appreciate how much fun mm -hmm. and the opportunities that you have out there. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. You mm -hmm. get to see the world. You get to go places you would, and do things you would never be That's able to true. do. That's true. You know, and it, you get to have experiences that people only dream about. I mean, and that's a fact. I mean, it's it's a wonderful, wonderful life. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I loved about it. So what, from a, being that you were studying to be an attorney and you were still working in the industry, mm -hmm. what were some of the pain points that you saw <laughs> um, that EXPs, you know, struggled with and things that, you sure. know, would come up com quite commonly? Which yeah, yeah. I, you know, the, <clears throat> obviously the big, and uh, as I mentioned, I'm not a spring chicken, so this is, you know, it was, uh, you know, I was starting in the 90s, early 2000s, you know, doing a lot of this work. And it was all independent contractor business, all 1099. Mm -hmm. So there was no, you had no benefits. Yeah. You had, you know, none of the things that you can count on uh, being an employee. You know, mm -hmm. uh, when I go to the, go look at my bank statement every Friday, you know, there's not, there's not, a, there's not a direct deposit there, yeah. right? And uh, you got to, you, you know, you, you've got to hunt. And if you're not hunting, you're not eating. Right, mm -hmm. so it's yeah. that's that's kind of how that worked, and and even then, uh, you know, because you're a 1099, you know, you kind of and this there's a lot of lessons learned uh, this the hard way, uh, but you learn how to structure your deals better to make sure that you get paid. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, yeah it's a lot of fun, and you know, and mm -hmm. and all the swag is nice, yeah, you know, and and. You know, there's nothing better than have a closet full of clothes you didn't buy. Right. You know, it all has a logo on it. But, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful, but getting paid is while you're there. Yeah. Um, so learning how to structure those deals up front is, is really, you know, probably the hardest part. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, you know, luckily I had people that, you know, did pay. I never had anybody not pay me. Mm -hmm. uh, but there were times, like the, the Italians like to say, you know, there's always time to eat. There's always time to pay. Mm. Yeah, I, anyway, that's another story. <laughs> so, let's jump right into one of the first questions. Okay. Can you just go over the difference between being a 1099 independent contractor mm -hmm. employee, at will employee, and sure. a W-2 em employee employee? Yeah, sure. Yeah, the, <coughs> excuse me, so the, the biggest difference, uh, you know, I think legally most people kind of understand that, you, you know, if you're a contractor, everything and Every, anything and everything is, is in your contract, right? Mm -hmm. What All your rights exist on that piece of paper, and that's it. Mm -hmm. They don't owe you benefits. They don't know, they're not gonna pay your taxes. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna do, and they may not cover any of your expenses unless mm -hmm. it's in your agreement. Yeah. Uh, you know, you are your own business. And you, by the way, you need to be set up as your own business, mm -hmm. right? So you, you should be set up as an LLC or whatever mm -hmm. is best for you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's good for tax purposes as well. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there's some other ways to save on taxes, too, that, that we can talk about a little bit later. But, uh, you know, that every, you do everything on your own. Mm -hmm. Now, the good news is you're doing everything on your own. Yeah. So, you know, you're not, you know, you, you, you get to dictate a lot of, of when you work, when you want, how you want to do things and all this kind of stuff. So that's wonderful. Now, if you're an employee, and this is kind of rare in this industry, Mm -hmm. um, you know, unless you're an employee of the agency, yeah. uh, typically, you know, that's, that's usually the only place that exists. Yeah. Um, you know, there it's a little bit different. Do you have some more rights? Yes, you do. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you have, uh, <clears throat> you know, and you know, particularly as far as things like harassment and all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Uh, although, you know, that, that's all catching up now too with contractors. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's almost a wash there. You know, do they pay your taxes? Do you get a check every Friday, every other Friday, or what have you? Do they mm -hmm. pay these different expenses? Yes. Is there more structure? Yes. Uh, you know, now, are you going to make as much? You know, probably not. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're an independent contractor and you, yeah. you can hustle, yeah. you will make more money than an employee. Mm -hmm. Because being, you know, understand that if I'm going to make $100,000 as an independent contractor, for me to be paid a hundred thousand dollars, you know, as as a an employee, that company's going to have to pay an extra twenty percent or more, right? For for all the benefits and the things that you're going to get, so you know, you're not going to get a hundred thousand dollars. You're only get, you're going to start at eighty. And oh, by the way, the IRS comes calling for both of you. Oh, by the way, if you're an independent contractor, make sure you're paying your taxes quarterly. Yeah. That's a, 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 a really going to catch you at the end of the year if you're not careful. Yeah. 
And then how about, because you know, with our industry, most of the time you're working gig jobs. So you mm -hmm. might work with one agency today and mm -hmm. you're an independent contractor, then tomorrow you're a W-2 employee. I mean, this is something, I'll ask you, but is it really worth it getting an LLC if you're not, you know, working with a lot of companies that may pay you? Because, you know, you have it, a well, mix of both. At the end of the day, the, I, you know, the answer is yes, mm -hmm. right? And, and a couple of, for a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, understand this, uh, an LLC is a limited liability company, mm -hmm. right? The first two words are the, the reason for it, limited liability. So, you're on a job somewhere, your contract is with, you know, Chris Perry, LLC. Mm -hmm. And I go out there and I do something really stupid, which I'm capable of. Mm -hmm. um, somebody gets hurt, uh, you know, then what, yeah. right? Now they want to come sue me. Well, the contract is with Chris Perry, LLC. That's going to be a firewall and only the assets within that company are going to be what they're going to be able to get. Okay. So they're not taking my house, they're not taking my car, mm -hmm. they're not taking my 401k. You know, they're not, they do not, they can't attach those kind of things. Okay. And then from a tax standpoint, you know, I may set up my LLC. I want to be taxed as an S corp. And what I will do is if I'm going to make, you know, a hundred thousand dollars during the year, I'm going to pay myself a salary yeah, of $50,000 mm -hmm. and I'm going to pay employment taxes on that first $50,000 because that's what I'm paying myself as a salary. The rest is going to be a distribution or a dividend. I do not pay employment taxes on that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to save, you know, that, those taxes right there. So just from a tax structure, it allows you to save some extra money. Okay. So for EXPs who are, you know, trying to decide whether or not getting an LLC is advantageous, is definitely something. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. And then um, as far as contracts, when an EXP, whether they're working as a brand ambassador, tour manager, when they're reading over these contracts and they're trying to, you know, they may not understand the lingo. Right. Sometimes a lot of the lingo may go over someone's head or they're just not familiar with, you know, the way that agencies right. and clients write contracts. What are a couple tips um, that you would give to sure. someone who's looking at the yeah. contract? So, first of all, whenever you read the contract, you need to go into this with a mindset. What could go wrong? Right. Mm -hmm. What and when or know, what could go wrong? When every when the house is on fire and I need to get out, how do I get out? So, you know, first thing obviously are the payment terms. Is is the amount correct? When am I getting paid? How am I getting paid? Expenses, how is all that covered? And explain in detail. And if it's not clear, make it clear. Okay. Then go to the termination part, right? Okay. What happens, you know, if they terminate how do they terminate? On what grounds can they terminate? Is it termination for cause? And if so, is that defined? Mm. Right? And is it defined clearly? Mm. Right? Okay. So, you know, you don't want it to be, you know, it's, you know, I mean, it's something as loose as, you know, we, we feel that what you're doing is not good. good. Yeah. Or the, client, the client's <laughs> or, not happy. Yeah, the or... client's not happy. Right. You know, I mean, they, they can put in language in there. And if it's, you know, and if you're sitting you're saying to yourself, I don't know what this means, then you need to ask. And then not only do you need to ask, but then that language needs to be put in the contract. Okay. So here's an important thing about contracts. Once you have the contract, all of those emails that you wrote before don't matter. Mm. Okay. So even that's like your paper it, trail? It, it, all, it okay. doesn't matter. Okay. Wow. That is outside. It's only in the four corners of that document. Wow. So now, I will give you a little, little tip here. And this may be getting the cart before the horse. I want to sue and I was made all these promises, they're in these emails, I have this contract written on a paper napkin, and it doesn't have all these extra things that they said they were going to do. Mm -hmm. And their defense is, well, here's the contract, this is, this is all that, that matters, this is, you know, this is the only thing here. <clears throat> and if you are suing in state court or superior court for an amount above $15,000, mm -hmm. then they may have a point. Mm -hmm. If you were suing in Magistrate court, i.e., like um, yeah. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I, I've just, I'm just slipping my mind here. Uh, small claims. Small claims. If you're going into small claims court, uh, you know the judge is going to give you a little more leeway because you're a lay person, right? Mm -hmm. You're not an attorney. You don't need. You know they don't expect you to come and play by all the same legal rules. So they may be a little bit more flexible mm -hmm. on that, a little more lenient uh, to do that. Now, make sure that you all heard this. $15,000 is the magic number. 
In any state? In Georgia. In Georgia. Okay. But it's probably similar in most states. Okay. Uh, you know, and, and <clears throat> now that doesn't mean that let's say I'm owed $16,000. I can't sue, but I can only ask for fifteen. Mm. Okay. 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 Now, and then other states will have a cap. And by the way, you can find out that by almost, you know, go to the court, the state and the court website. Okay. Um, so, um, <clears throat> you know, so that, you know, I would recommend that, you know, one, never, you should never let yourself get that deep anyway. Right. Right. I mean, you should never, never, ever wake up, you know, because if it gets to a number that big and they're having trouble paying you, chances are they're not going to pay you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, and I, you know, I know we were talking a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, you know, before, before we started, uh, looking at the goats here. Um, <laughs> and one of the things we talked about is really from a legal perspective, you know, I can talk to you about the technicalities and I can talk to you about the paper and sort of little things that, that can, you know, kind of help you out, but it really boils down to good business practices, okay. having good business practices. And a good contract, you know, are, are, is the best thing. Mm -hmm. But if you just do smart things up front, right. you know, and make sure that, that what you're doing is defined, how you're getting paid is defined, and how you get out of that contract, if you want to get out of that contract, okay. uh, <clears throat> and I, I, we didn't really talk about that too, but you need to know how you can get out, yeah. right? You don't want to be you know, on the hook or all of a sudden give them reason to not pay you money they owe you. Right. Um, so, you know, make sure that you understand how to terminate a contract as well. And, and that, they like said, these are all clauses and areas of the contract that should be called out ahead of time. So, okay. So if someone is executing a tour mm -hmm. and a month into the tour, um, things have changed. It's not what they were promised on the original contract that they signed. Mm -hmm. They're working more hours. Um, but you're not getting paid more um, and other factors may be going on and you went back to the agency and said hey I want to be compensated more I think that you know the work that I'm doing far outweighs what we had in the original contract can we go back and restructure and mm -hmm. they put an email yeah we agree to this new amount of weekly salary this new amount of per diem at that point you need to be asking for a new contract right or an amendment Okay. All right. And typically you'll see this at the end of each contract. You know, this contract would be amended, but both parties signed, you know, what have you. Okay. But amended contract, uh, you know, whereas we had a contract on this date between these parties mm -hmm. is now amended as follows. Cut, paste, all other terms and conditions remain the same. Okay. Sign and then send it to them and tell them to sign it. Okay. Because sometimes they'll be like, this email suffices as a... Okay, change. <clears throat> so you still should push now, to go ahead. Yeah, now, how yeah. do you do it? Like if they say this email, you know, suffices or serves as. Does the contract a, say it does? Or does the contract mm -hmm. say you need to have both parties sign? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. The contract will tell you. Okay. And, you know, and that's, that's really, like I said, it, you know, when I first started with the Paris Motorsports Organization and I looked at the contract they had. And I said, this is, this is ridiculous. You cannot keep doing this. You know, we have, we are really exposing ourselves to a lot of things here. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, not just, you know, from, from corporate programs that we were running, but from our sponsorships, from all these sorts of things, because it, it, a lot of stuff was just not defined. Okay. And anytime there's something is not defined in the yeah. process, you know, what it is and how it's done, you open yourself to a, a potential problem. Okay. Uh, so we went from a, a, literally a one-page contract to three pages, and they were screaming. You know, the salespeople were screaming like a pig, like, "No, you can't, you can't do this. You're going to scare the con you know, our customers away." Mm -hmm. And we had one problem with this three-page contract, and it ended up being a five-page contract because the president of the company said, "All right, we need more of this." Okay. Right. So you know, <clears throat> and I guess to, to bring this all full circle here, what you know, where I, where I'm going with this is, if it's not in there and you know, and, and you, you know, you have some experience, mm -hmm. you know, you, you learn as you go, you know, what things you need to have in there. Okay. Here's my day rate. You know what? None of us work an eight hour day. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. Am I going to accept that I'm all, that I'm going to get paid this much, whether it takes me 10 hours or it takes me two hours. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and sometimes that's, I mean, that's the way I did it, mm -hmm. but I knew I was also going to have three hour days. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I was going to have 
10 hour Nowadays, days or 12 yeah. hour days for, mm -hmm. you know, four or five years straight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I was okay with that. Mm -hmm. But if you're not okay with that, then you need to say this is from this time to this time. And if it's above and beyond this many hours, then it, uh, you know, I'm entitled to a fee of this much. I invoice and I will get paid within seven days or okay. 14 days or whatever the payment terms are. Mm -hmm. You know, so <clears throat> as you, you know, if, and if you don't understand the program, what's expected of you, then you, you know, again, that, that, that goes back to this sort of statement of work that you're doing. If it's mm -hmm. not crystal clear exactly what you're doing, then you need to ask them to put more detail in there, exactly what it is, and then look at it and say, is that reasonable that I can get that done in a, in a 10 hour day? Okay. And if the answer is no, then you need to ask for more money or you maybe need to ask for, you know, <clears throat> after a certain hour, then I get paid over and check. Martin, we have a question. Now that companies are switching to W-2, at what point are we entitled to company benefits that the corporate employees are getting, such as insurance or the ability to get any pre-tax deductions? The, <clears throat> if, 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 if you're an employee, a W-2 employee, the company should be taking out taxes. Okay. You, and now the entitlement to, to company benefits will depend on what they're company benefit program plan is. Mm -hmm. Some company benefits are so bad, you know, I mean, it's, you know, it's, 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 it, you know, you, you may be better off just sticking with your own insurance. You mm -hmm. may be, you know, you're better off taking your money and putting in, in the, you know, this account that you've been putting your money into. Right. Maybe, you know, that might not be any kind of benefit, but they, you, <clears throat> once you sign as an employee, you should get, here's your probationary period. Here's when this is, mm -hmm. here's when you qualify for that. All that should be, you should be getting a packet, you know, I, I, the thickness yeah, is going to yeah. be based on the company, mm -hmm. but you, sh you, know, you should be getting all that information. And if you're not, you need to ask up front, like, you know, the HR person, you know, excuse me, but when am I going to get this, this, and this? But things start tolling from the day you start working as an employee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And those du deductions as well, that should be given to you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> you know, and, and like I said, that's, that's kind of a plus and a minus. Right? Mm -hmm. If you've been living the gypsy life and loving the gypsy life, mm -hmm. and yeah, you are taking every tax break and everything, and you know, from your mom's internet to, <laughs> you know, whatever, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's addicting. And then all of a sudden you get a, ch a ch paycheck for the two weeks and you don't know what happened. Right. You need to be ready for that. I mean, you need to take a get ready pill because it's, you know, when they start pulling out, for your taxes and they start pulling out for your share of the benefits now these aren't free benefits yeah. they're never free you, gotta use them. you still have to pay a portion of it yeah the company pays you know okay. a big portion of it but it's not the whole portion of it right mm -hmm. the 80s are over yeah. so you know you you're gonna you know it's gonna be quite a bit I mean you're gonna see mm -hmm. things happen and it, it you know it can be a little shocking mm -hmm. Okay, EXP, so I hope you guys are listening and taking notes. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you, and we talked about this when we met, Terry and I met with you, is you um, stressed the importance of having your own contract. Like if you're mm -hmm. executing long-term tours or long-term programs, yep. it's having your own contract that you present to agencies um, and also signing their independent contractor or sure. W-2 um, contract prior to executing an event. Um, go through kind of the the uh, thought process behind doing that as an EXP protecting yourself and what are some things that EXP should put um, in their yeah. own contracts that they send to agencies? Well, like I said, I, I think that the biggest thing, you know, or, I mean, let's, let's just go through the essentials, right? Make sure that, you know, you've set it up as your company, make sure it's in the company name. And when you get to the bottom, don't just sign your name. Mm -hmm. You need to sign your name as managing member of blankety blank blank LLC okay all right so mm -hmm. you're signing on behalf of the company that you have created okay all things need to be payable to your company not to you mm. all right okay. now you don't want to you know I mean there's not a whole lot that goes into the management of an LLC right but you do want to do the simple things to make sure that you keep those protections alive then <clears throat> then we get into like I said what, what are the basics What's my statement of work? What, what are my duties that I'm supposed to be performing? That's exhibit A, right? Exhibit A, define what that is. Clearly, Clearly, okay. with details. Okay. And what I would suggest is not only these are my duties, but what are the, how am I being measured? Okay. 
how is my job performance being measured? Mm -hmm. And that's probably a question that you need to ask before the contract get, comes out, yeah. right? Well, you know, we're expecting that you're gonna have, you know, 5,000 signups, uh, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. per event weekend in our database. Mm -hmm. We're expecting this many test drives. Uh, you know, th these are, the, you know, this is data, how, right. Interactions. You know, th these are the measurables. Okay, well, by the way, and this creates an opportunity for you. Um, and I'm a little ADHD, so I'm, I'm, you gotta keep me, keep me on the track here. But if, if I understand that these are the measurables, then, you know, that's probably gonna be, you know, when we say for, you know, for cause or whatever, then, you know, okay, so if I'm doing 50% or less of those measurables, then I understand that, you know, that I could be terminated, okay. but spell it out. Okay. And then the other thing, what if I'm doing more, right? right. So they're gonna say, hey, you're going to be fired for cause if you're a 50% less. Okay, what am I? What if I'm 150? So bonus. What if I'm? Yeah. What's my bonus? Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, if I'm overperforming, you if you're my underperforming, fine. You want to get rid of me? I get it. But if I'm overperforming, you know, so set the set the benchmark for the measurable so that you understand what's a good job, mm -hmm. right? That also puts in mind what you, <clears throat> again, have you know, if, if this isn't your first rodeo. You have an idea, what, are these reasonable, one, yeah. and two, how hard am I gonna work for that? And then we get down to the payment, all right? Yeah. So what am I getting a day rate? Am I getting an hourly rate? You know, how does that work? Am I getting travel days, mm -hmm. right? Does that count yeah. or not? Is it a certain half amount or just <clears throat> right, rate? Yeah. Right, right. You know, am I getting uh, a certain, st st how is the stipend? And how does that work? Is it per meal? Is it a, a flat amount for the day? What does it cover and what does it not cover? Mm -hmm. All right, what, <clears throat> what what items are expensable, if any? Okay. Right, um, and simple things like this, travel. All right, I would never in a million years let anybody book my travel. Yeah. All right, I've gone to counseling about that. <laughs> I'm better now, but I'm telling you, I was OCD about my travel. I want to make sure that I got my points. Yeah. I want to make sure that I was on the. You know, I mean, we live in Atlanta, Georgia, God bless Delta, Delta and a yes. one-way flight, yes. you know, everywhere in the world. Yeah. You know, I was not going to fly any other airline, yeah. right? I was not going to do it. I needed my points with Hilton, mm -hmm. you know, maybe with Marriott, you know, but, you know, listen, I need my diamonds, you know, <laughs> I mean, I need that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, you know, and if you're doing this a lot, you know, that stuff is kind of important. It is. I mean, I, it, I you know, yeah, people can make, can make fun of it. Night. But, you know, when, when, when your flight is delayed and you can walk in the crown room and they will fix your problem for you while you have free drinks, your life is a lot better mm -hmm. than the jabroni that's out in the hallway in the long line who's not leaving tonight. Yeah. Right? So you can see that this guy, anyway, I, see, I told no, you now right, I'm, I'm, right, on, I'm right. going to off track. <laughs> <clears throat> but, so how, how are those expenses handled? Mm -hmm. Then get down to the termination. Right? How does the contract, and then default, what's the default language? And this is really talking about now about payment. Yeah. What kind of notice do you have to, you know, how is default by the provider, by the agency defined? Yeah. And in there needs to be a paragraph or at least a sentence that if they do not pay within X number of days. Right. And after X number of days notice from you, right? Mm -hmm. So they have, you, <clears throat> so an example would be after seven days, they would be in default upon, you would give notice, and most contracts are gonna have a notice and cure window. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna say, I'm gonna give notice 30 days, you know, after which, if they do not pay in full, they will be in default. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that important? Because if you do not walk through all those steps and you walk into the courtroom and you say, they're in default, they're gonna say, no, we're not, because you didn't do this. Mm -hmm. And we agreed that this was the procedure that's gonna happen. Now, does that kill your case? No, but they may kick it out until you do that and then have to come back right, th 30 days later. Right. And if you got an extra 30 days and you got the extra time and effort and the money to, to chase all this, yeah, fine, go at it. Yeah. But if you don't, and most people don't, then you need to follow the rules that are in that contract. Mm, okay. <clears throat> as a independent contractor, if you take the time as an LLC to create your own contract that you send to agencies. Mm -hmm. How often do you need to update this contract? Is it, do laws change that much where it's good for three years, five <laughs> years, or do you have to? <clears throat> well, the, the benefit of <clears throat> if I do my own contract, and by the way, I don't, you know, I, I'll just be honest with you. When I had my own agency, if somebody sent me a contract, I would not use it. Mm -hmm. I would say, thank you very much. I'll give you my contract. 
because my contract is based in the state of Georgia and there's going to be a venue clause and a venue clause means that if you're going to sue me, you're going to have to sue me in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. I'm not getting on a plane to get sued. In a different state. Right? Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> you know, now, that being said, if you have your own contract that you're sending out, here's a contract for my services, blank, 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 you're going to get down to the choice of law, you're going to put the law in your state, you could try a venue clause, I, if I were them I would strike it, but put it in, uh, you know, if you don't ask you never get. Uh, so, <clears throat> you know, you can have those things in there. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, this is kind of important too. Understand, uh, and again, I, I realize I'm, I'm going off on another tangent here, but you want to sue Agency X, right? They have, they have done you wrong, they owe you money, you've got all this evidence, you've got all this great, you've got a great case. They are based in Missouri. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I picked Missouri. Mm -hmm. um, Show know. me state. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, I like Drew Lock. I think that's, that's what it was. The, uh, so anyway, you, <clears throat> you, to sue them, you have to serve them, right? And you have to serve them in Missouri. Mm. So another reason to think about what is your business plan? What is your business structure of the deal? And when I look at these payment terms, make sure that you can't get too far behind, okay. right? I want a deposit. I want money up front. I want, you know, I want money the week before I do the work, and then we'll talk about overages after. Mm -hmm. I want these sorts of things, uh, you know, or I need to have a very firm policy that I'm gonna get paid every week, every Friday. And if that check does not show up on Friday, I do not show up to work on Monday. Mm. And that also needs to be in that contract that if you know if a payment is not made on time you will be in default no notice is required and this you know you have the right to terminate this contract and sue including acceleration of damages acceleration of damages means the contract was for 10 grand i've only worked five grand worth of work but i can sue them for that five grand because they have a material breach of the contract wow okay so that's some good information um and it's a lot to take in i'm gonna go back and watch this video too but i think you already touched on it but just we're gonna wrap up yeah. how do exps deal with the unfair business practices by agencies you know we have a lot of groups on facebook a lot of mm -hmm. different job boards where agencies where exps are constantly talking about their bad experiences whether it's pay whether it's um an agency not uh, honoring what they put in a contract or um just not paying at all. Yeah. How does an EXP go about go well, about dealing with yeah. those issues and making sure? So, like I said, I, you know, I, I think the you know the, the biggest thing, you know, first of all, where is your agency, right? And if it's an agency here in Atlanta, mm -hmm. I would use the name of some, but I have worked with them. They're actually good folks, so I don't want to make it a bad example. But Agency X, yeah, and they decide they want to hire me, and a month goes by and they still haven't paid me. Well, one, first of all, shame on me. Yeah. Okay. I did not define my payment terms good enough. I did not define my default terms and notice terms. And I have done a bad job and I put myself in a bad place. Mm -hmm. That's a bad business practice. This is not a legal issue. This is a business issue. Okay. All right. I am not handling my business well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not saying I deserve it, mm -hmm. but, you know, I, I, my hands are dirty on this because I have let them do it. I have essentially waived any, you know, claims that I may have. Now, we get to that point one, send a demand letter, right? You are this in arrears and this much, bang, 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 bang. I need you know, payment within seven days, uh, you know, otherwise I'm going to terminate this agreement and cease to, to work, uh, including, you know, and, I, and then at that point we will sue for all things, including attorney's fees. Uh, expenses outlaid and all those sorts of things, um, <clears throat> including travel to get home, right? So all mm -hmm. those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So you can you you know you can put that in the demand letter. Now will they will they bite on it? They might not. Right. But you'll probably get somebody's attention. You're probably going to get a phone call. Mm -hmm. Hey, what you know? What is this? Hey, come on, you know what this yeah. is. Yeah. You have not paid me. Yeah. All right. Now look, uh, all I'm saying is that I want you to be things to be brought current before I continue. If not, as I've stated in the letter, and per the terms of our agreement, and they better be in that agreement, I am walking off the job after seven days notice if I still have not been paid. Right. Okay. <clears throat> and then you gotta go. Then, now we come back to that magic number, $15,000. 
I go down to the magistrate court, I fill out a form, I come into court, and by the way, you can go talk to an attorney. You don't need an attorney for this, okay. but you might want to talk to an attorney to get uh, a, a plan. And I do this with a lot of a lot of clients that are smaller claims. We'll sit down for an hour. Okay, here's the law that you need because you, know, you still have to go by the law, yeah. right? Just you know, I mean, it's a it's a layman's court, but that doesn't mean the law doesn't apply. Right. So understanding what law is at stake, what are the elements that I have to prove and then go from there. So I have a contract, I have a meeting of the minds, I have consideration, and I have action, right, mm -hmm. on both, on all parties. Uh, you know, we agreed, here's the contract, it's in the four corners of this document, I did the X, Y, and Z, that's therefore, according to this, I am owed blank, 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 therefore, Your Honor, they owe me this much money. Right. And this is an inexpensive way to do it. Mm -hmm. It is not inexpensive for the agency. Mm -hmm. All right, most of these are, uh, set up as an LLC as well. That means they have to hire an attorney. Oh, by the way, that's important to know. Uh, you can go in as, you know, and, and uh, you, you can do that, but they need to have, uh, you know, they probably have to get an attorney to go in there uh, or somebody has to go in there. Now, you know, and here's, here's the truth about the agencies, right? They aren't making as much money as everybody thinks they are, yeah. and they're working a lot more than everybody thinks they do. And if I have to take a day off to go deal with something, it might be better for me to just pick up the phone and say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna give you, you know, I'm gonna give you, you know, five grand and let's just part ways yeah. and be done with it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and go on. Mm -hmm. Now, what I, <clears throat> so anyway, so those are, you know, so that would that would be how I would handle it. Mm -hmm. Send a demand letter, you know, don't wait. Do, do not wait, mm -hmm. don't do not sit and let this, pile of money get bigger and bigger and bigger, the bigger it gets, the harder it is to collect. Mm -hmm. And that's just, you know, with anything. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then, you know, then, then you can walk through those steps if you need to. Mm -hmm. Now, the other side of this, this is a business, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I need, you know, uh, you know, ask people, you know, what are these agencies like? You know, mm -hmm. they, they, they probably, you know, are there, you know, is there anybody, you know, you, you've got this network of people, has anybody worked with this agency? Has anybody worked on this program? You know, tell me about it, mm -hmm. right? Ask for the red flag so that you can address it before you sign the deal. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, then get, you know, and address it, you know, in that deal prep. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some agencies are just bad agencies. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the paper is only as good as the person that signs it. Mm -hmm. And if they're a bad person, and I'll, you know, and I'll, like, I'll just tell you, we were a smaller agency compared to some of the ride and drive companies that we went up against. Mm -hmm. We paid our people on time, every time. Mm -hmm. That means that we didn't get paid for, mm -hmm. sometimes for quite a while, mm -hmm. waiting for these Italians to hurry up and get, get you know, ready to sign a check. Right. Um, so that was, you know, that, <clears throat> which was, you know, a rather painful process. But we wanted to make sure that we took care of our guys. People. Now, as a result, when we had a program, and it wasn't for uh, months mm -hmm. like they would get with uh, with other providers, right. they would come and jump on our program. They would leave the bigger provider, mm -hmm. and they would work for us. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the other providers got mad. Yeah. But you know what? They understood. I mean, you know, they know why, yeah. and the guys, you know, the, these weren't cheap people, by the way. These were all race car drivers. These are very talented uh, guys. You know, they you, they don't grow on trees. Uh, you know, so it, 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 some of these guys were just really hard to find. You know, so they're not going to get mad. Well, they're going to get mad, but they're not going to get that mad because they need them, right? Now, <clears throat> which brings up sort of another point. Understand the market you're in, too. Um, and this is really a more of a leverage kind of business question. You know, when I first got into motorsports and I was just learning the business, you know, everybody wanted my job. Mm -hmm. Everybody wanted to go work at the racetrack. You know, mm -hmm. why wouldn't you? You know, so when I sat there and people were asking, like, well, how come you're getting paid so little? Well, it's because they don't have to, yeah. right? You're infinitely replaceable. Yeah. And if that's the case, you know, you need to understand that up front mm -hmm. and understand that, you know, you could be here today and gone tomorrow. Yeah. Um, 
<clears throat> you know, and when you start demanding a lot of things and a lot of this and a lot of that, you know, you might be gone. Mm-hmm. Which it, brings me, sorry to cut yeah, you, no brings my next question. The personal slander, like um, bashing the agency or talking about an agency in a public forum. Can an agency come back and sue you for that? Um, and two, what is like the grace period in which you can sue an agency? Like, is it like, I forgot, what do they call it? The statute of limitations. limitations. Yes. What no, is, statute of limitations in Georgia is two years okay. for pretty much everything. Okay. Right. So if there's something you've got two years, uh, you know, from, from when that, Transaction. So, in other words, when the default of the contract occurs, mm-hmm. I got two, excuse me, two years. Okay. Now, slander. This is a fun one. Um, you know, I <clears throat> could the agency sue you? Yes, they could. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, does the agency have the money and time to do this? Probably not. Okay. Um, is it a good business practice as an EXP? No, no, dear God, no. Are you kidding me? Because it's out on now out there in social media, and if you think they aren't checking to find out who you are and what you are, and they find out that you, you know, went out, went off on some other agency, you're the last person I'm hiring. Right. All right. Now this isn't, you know, uh, you know, I, I, there, I don't need that kind of heartache in my life. Yeah. Again, I, you know, we, we sometimes we look at the agencies and we we're. You know, like, gosh, these guys are making bank and they're doing all this. Yeah, but they work their ass off. Yeah. And they aren't making as much money as you think. Mm-hmm. And it's not, it's a lot of hard work, you know, putting these deals together. You, you, you I mean, the number of hours that go in before, you, you know, just to get the deal a is a lot. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the last thing you need is to bring in somebody that might be a problem. Now, and if you go out there and you do this, you become a problem. Now, is that what you want? Is that good for your business? Is that good for your personal brand? No, right. it's not. Right. So unless there is an incredibly large sum of money at stake, it's best to keep your mouth shut. Yeah, because that's my thing. It's like, okay, we, you don't want to say anything, but on the flip side, there are bad agencies and there are instances where agencies don't take care of their staff or don't pay. Mm-hmm. So how can we as EGs well, have our... You know, <coughs> listen, our you can say... My experience with Brand X Agency was this. Mm-hmm. I did this program. I was not paid for 30 days after. You can decide you know, if that's what you want. Okay. I decided it was not for me because I found that other agencies paid better. Okay. Right? Now, that's a, that's a, that's a straight fact. Mm-hmm. I didn't say, I didn't call them blankety blanks. <laughs> I didn't call them this, that, or the other. Right. I didn't say they were sleeping around or showing <laughs> up drunk or doing mm-hmm. any of these kinds of, you know, politician like things Mm -hmm. you know you have so be careful on what you say don't put yourself out you know Mm -hmm. but the biggest thing I just said is don't you can address things in a a matter of fact way right take the emotion out of it and that's fine Mm -hmm. but you know just just make sure that you don't have this inflammatory language in there and understand that you know you you know like like everybody right Mm -hmm. what happens in three years when I have my own agency and I want to get a big deal and somebody goes and Googles me and, and, and they saying. find this, mm-hmm. how is that going to reflect on me? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you have to keep that kind of stuff in mind. So this is, that's just mom advice, really. Okay. <laughs> EXPs, I hope you're listening. Before you, before you hit send or, or post that negative thought, just think about it first. All right. So a couple more questions and we're going to wrap up. Um, as an EXP, how do they find out about the different um, laws protecting them as independent and, contra- and W-2 employees sure. um, in different states? Where can they go? <laughs> yeah, so the, you know, every state, and I'll, I'll give you a quick uh, three years of law school here. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, essentially, you, you have each, each state, will, will, for the most part, control a, a lot of these stuff. So a lot of law, laws are local in that, mm-hmm. to that state. That means that each state, House, and Senate will pass these laws. They put them into effect in what is called the official uh, annotated code of blank fill in your state, right? Mm-hmm. OCGA, Official Code of Georgia Annotated, is, is what's here in Georgia. Okay. <clears throat> you would search that code to find out what code applies to this particular application. Breach of contract, and are they required to, to do this? Or they, do they, is this an at-will state? All these sorts of things would be in the official code. In there are going to be definitions. They are always, not always, for the most part, left sort of in a gray area, mm-hmm. right? Okay. 
So what does that mean? What does it mean that uh, I'm an at-will employee? Do, they, do I really have any rights or do I not? Then you have to go to case law and you have to look this up, yeah. right? Where was this code cited in case law? And you know, and what's it, where are a couple of key words and there's some websites you can go to, to find these sorts of things. It's, and it's, <clears throat> it, is, it is rather lengthy and, and you know, what have you. Um, but at the end of the day, you're always gonna start with a code Start there, find there, it will lead you to other things. You know, Google is a wonderful thing, right? You can, mm -hmm. it, is, it can really help you, even if you don't have access to legal research, uh, you know, type of websites, you can find some of those answers there. Mm -hmm. And with a lot of attorneys too, you know, you can probably call them up and say, hey, listen, I've got this situation, you know, or, you know, do they have a, a consult? Mm -hmm. Most, you know, you can probably find an attorney that will give you a half an hour that will talk about, well, you're, you know, in this situation, your rights would be X, Y, and Z, uh, and those sorts of things. If, you know, if, if, if you're, you're really interested and you really want to pursue it, but understand that after 30 minutes, you know, their interest is going to wane and you're going to, you know, going to kind of have to make a decision. Do you want to pay this attorney or not? Okay. Um, but, you know, that, that's really where you start. And then let's just play devil's advocate from the agency side. Um, how do uh, agencies, if they're dealing with clients and they're looking to gain consistent clients and um, execute programs for brands, how do they um, structure their contracts? Like because oftentimes, you know, agencies may say, "I haven't been paid by the right. client, right. and so I'm still awaiting payment." <coughs> and even though we agreed contractually to pay you this time, you know, I haven't right. um, received payment from that client yet. Well. Yeah, you know, and again, so this now let's go back to the business structure, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I've got my agency, I'm at 22, and mm -hmm. I'm dealing with Maserati, mm -hmm. and I know that they are going to be a slow paying company, all right? And I know this from experience. Mm -hmm. So I've got a, a proposal, I'm going to do a six city tour, I'm going to be, you know, three days here, bing, 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 bing. I have set up my spreadsheet, I understand what my hard costs are. Uh, I'm going to ask for a deposit. Or I'm gonna ask for a deposit up front. I'm gonna put that money in the savings account and I'm gonna make sure that money is there so that I can pay my, my contractors, I can pay for the hotels, I can pay for this for at least a, the majority of the program. Right. Right? And that's just how you have to structure it. You know, and you just say, listen, I have to put deposits down. I cannot rent the track, I cannot rent these places, I've gotta put money down to hold this. You know, to make sure that, that you know that this is going to be available when we get there. I need to pay for the cars. I need to pay for these things. You know, I've got to pay for the transportation. Yeah, I've got to. Yeah, right. I've got to. I've got. To, you know. Now, do you really? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. But that's your story. Stick to it. Mm -hmm. So you want to have that sort of structure in there. And the other thing that I would look at, and this is again back to a business thing. Don't ask for a one-year deal. Mm. Right. Right. You know, they're going to sit there, and again as you're, you're putting this deal together, ask the, the company, how are you gonna measure it, okay? At the end of the year, you need to have an ROI. Mm -hmm. Sit down with them mm -hmm. and show them how you hit those numbers, exceeded those numbers, areas that you can improve, and suggestions for the next year, right? right? <clears throat> and then get that going. What you don't really want is this, that you go back and you do all this and then you have to rebid for your deal again. Yeah. Right, so if you can get a multi-year deal, and why a multi-year deal? I mean, if I'm, if I'm the company, I'm like, why would I do that? Right? Why would mm -hmm. I commit the years two and three? I can't, do, you know, I can't do that. You got to see what you do. Yeah, 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 blah, blah. You know, okay, well, you know, we can have a termination clause if, if we don't get to a certain level, we mm -hmm. don't hit certain numbers. Yeah, yeah then, then you can terminate it for cause. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. You know, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll agree to that in exchange for the commitment. You know, that I'm going to be here if I continue to consistently hit on these you know these marks but <clears throat> you know just understand that they're going to be looking for ROI I mean at the end of the day that's all they care about mm -hmm. right because they have to go eventually get in front of a panel of bean counters and say I spent this money the company's money and here's what I got from it yeah, and the sales and the overall long -term right. success so your ability to demonstrate that will be a big help but the other part is it doesn't happen the first year, right? Mm -hmm. it, you know, you can come out the first year, uh, well, I mean, it could, right, depending on what the measurables are. But if it's sales, what is the sales cycle of that product, mm -hmm. right? If it's 
for example, cars, and you're going to go out and do this ride and drives, mm -hmm. you know, the first year, you need to be looking at impressions. You need to be looking at, you know, all those kinds of things. Did it, you know, what happened to, to web traffic after those events? What kind of things were posted on social media? What sort of, you know, how do we capture all these sorts of things? Because at the end of the day, one, you don't have the sales numbers. Yeah. <laughs> you probably can't track it. Yeah. And oh, by the way, you know, somebody that goes to this event probably isn't going to buy a car until six months later anyway. Mm -hmm. Or longer. Mm -hmm. You don't know. I mean, you really have no clue. Yeah. So it's <clears throat> almost impossible. And the only way that that information is really going to trickle down to you is if the marketing executive that hired you really likes you and they want to help keep you in place, then they will find a way to make those numbers happen. Right. All right. So anyway, I'm probably not answering your question. I'm just talking about my own life experience here. But <clears throat> as an agency, again, the, you know, the, the same rules are going to apply. I want to get a deposit up front to make sure that I can pay my guys as I get through this. What are the payment terms? What do they look like? What happens if they don't pay? Yeah. Right. So that's that's really important that you address that. That you know the 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 you know it's going to stop. You're gonna you're gonna you agree that you are going to pay me for all the deposits that I put down mm -hmm. for the events that don't happen because you didn't pay me on time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what is that default? What's the notice and cure time period? Okay all those sorts of things okay. um, so you need to have that that information in there and like I said I would have a, try and ask for a multi-year term you probably might not get it mm -hmm. you know but ask you gotta ask yeah. so question that comes up all the time in the groups um, <laughs> is this question of unionizing um, sure. us as independent contractors and EXPs dealing with um, unfair payment terms not being paid at all uh, fairly written contracts unwritten unfair written contracts mm -hmm. a lot of exps propose the question of starting a union and having a one-stop shop where you know legally we can be protected what are your thoughts on having a union this is our last question <laughs> what are your thoughts on um sure. forming a union for experiential marketing professionals is it something that makes sense legally to do can it be done um <clears throat> well i, I mean uh, you know this is uh this is probably going to be a, a hard topic, really, to sum up in, in a couple of minutes. But the long and short of it is, can you do it? I mean, you're, you're, you're talking about hurting a whole bunch of cats that you would, uh, would be almost impossible mm -hmm. to do, I right? Say that. Particularly if you're an EXP at the ground level, mm -hmm. and I could go and pull somebody off a college campus to do your job with no experience, but it doesn't matter. And they don't want to be in the union. By the way, union means surcharge on top of what you're already going to charge me right. as a company. So I, you know, somebody's got to pay the union. Remember that. And it's, you know, so that, you know, now you're making, now as an agency, mm -hmm. I think that's horrible because I don't, you know, I don't need my work cost to be more expensive. And I don't need a higher cost as I'm trying to close a deal. So they're going to be against it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Now for the workers, you know, I, I mean, this is my two cents. And my brother uh, is a teacher. Mm -hmm. He's in a teacher's union. Mm -hmm. And he was going through talking about renewing his contract. And the union got him a rate of this. Mm -hmm. And I said, Dana, I think you could have negotiated a better deal on your own. Mm -hmm. Now, that's my frame of mind. I think I can get a better deal for myself. I don't want to I don't want to pay somebody to negotiate something I can do on my own. All right? So that's... That's my personal belief, mm -hmm. right? Now, if, if you're out there and you're saying, well, I, I feel unprotected, I feel, you know, I don't have these protections. Well, one, you're an independent contractor. That's part of the, you know, the bitter that goes with the sweet of being an independent contractor. You know, the sweet part, how you get to work when you want, you get to do the jobs you want, you know, you get to spend your time how you want, and oh, by the way, you got all these miles, you get to, you know, get a free vacation to the Bahamas, you know, mm -hmm. with, with your girlfriend, that's great, you know. You know that you want this sweet lifestyle. You know you you got to take the the bitter with that, right? Now, can you protect yourself better? Yes, and I think that goes back to you know having these addressing a lot of these issues up front, mm -hmm. right? And it, can you do it yourself? Yes, you can, right? Mm -hmm. And you can do that. Mm -hmm. You know, you just need to make sure that you understand what the deal needs to look like, mm -hmm. and make sure that before you sign and agree to do it, it looks that way. And that everything that you are concerned about and have been concerned about are discussed, defined, and detailed in that agreement. 
And if it's not, then you need to ask yourself, do I want to do this? And if they refuse to address it, do I want to work for them? Or if they refuse to address these things, what is my out? Right. How do I get out of this without hurting myself any, you know, very much? I don't mm -hmm. want to spend a lot of time working for somebody if I'm not going to get paid. So how do I shorten the amount of time <laughs> I'm going to work before the default kicks in mm -hmm. and I can get out and go get another job? Mm. Okay. EXPs, I hope you guys heard that. <laughs> just, he just dropped some gems on that, that whole union topic. And just um, to piggyback on that, you know, uh, Terry and I sat down with Chris about two, three weeks ago to just redo all of our contracts um, from an independent con contractor standpoint as well um, as a business standpoint. So you have to take the time. You have to invest, especially if you work in this industry, you've been doing it long term. You know, put the money aside to be able to invest in making sure that your contracts are written you know, in a way which not only benefits you, but is fair across the board and um, also protects you in the event. Because I've been there, we've been there, and we <laughs> consulted with him when we had issues with agencies not paying us at, at all, you know, and being able to deal with those situations. And like Chris said, a lot of it goes back to just making sure initially you do what you're supposed to do on the contract yeah. side. So, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, people like me were selling security, right? Comfort, right? Mm -hmm. I want to know that I have this you know, to fall back on if things go bad, things go bad. right. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, make sure that you take care of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, before I let you go, go ahead, EXP's Chris, um, as I said, he's based here in the Atlanta, Georgia area, but he consults with um, clients nationwide. So you, if you have any questions, um, I'm gonna let him jump in and chime in with this information <laughs> in a minute. But if you need anything from consulting um, help, you wanna sit down and consult with him um, for 30 minutes about an issue you may be having with the agency. Mm -hmm. If you wanna go ahead and create your own uh, contracts as an LLC to make sure that you're protecting yourself as well. Uh, Chris is here and he can help you with all of that. So sure. go ahead and, and drop your plug in there. Yeah, yeah, you know, thanks, yeah. Mind. And you know, and I think one of, the, one of the reasons, not just that I'm here, but really one to work you know with uh, with you guys is you know I've been there I've been on the road I've done these things and I, you know what I love it and when I see somebody you know who's coming up and trying to do this and trying to do it the, the right way you know I know it's how hard it is this, mm -hmm. this is not an easy life you know because a lot of people want to do it I mean again you know mm -hmm. everybody wants that contract mm -hmm. you know everybody wants you know that tour. everybody wants that tour right mm -hmm. it's it's very competitive um, you know, I, and I really enjoy helping people. So, uh, my website is thesperrylawfirm.com. So, T H E Sperry is S P as in Paul, E R R Y lawfirm.com. Uh, you can go there, kind of see, you know, there's a picture of me, all, this, you know, all kinds of great stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there's a contact page, so you can, you can get all my information there. But my uh, email address is chris at thesperrylawfirm.com. My phone number uh, is, is on the website as well, 678. Five five nine six four three six. Free uh, thirty minute consultations to anybody. Okay. Um, you know, and if and look, if, if you you can see if you can just get me talking, it might turn into forty five minutes mm -hmm. or an hour. Um, <laughs> you know, that's and that's fine. Uh, so again, uh, six seven eight five five nine six four three six. Please don't hesitate to call. Mm -hmm. um, love to love to help you out. And see Chris with the C. That is correct. All right, Chris with the C. So <laughs> thank you guys all for tuning in. I'm going to put all of his information that he just um, spoke about in the comment section um, in this video. And as always, it will be up on YouTube for you guys to go back and watch and share. Please share it with other EXPs. Share with other agencies as well. Um, he helps agencies too. Mm -hmm. If you're looking um, to restructure your contracts as an agency or you have questions about that process, um, you can definitely, agencies, please take advantage of um, work, re working and reaching out to Chris as well. Thank you guys all for tuning in. Thank you, Chris, for taking the time to speak with me tonight. Thank you to Corey Reese. He's in the <laughs> background. He helped me out tonight because we had some Wi-Fi issues. So special thanks to him as well uh, for helping me uh, get this interview done and put together. So enjoy your holidays, guys. Uh, be safe. And if you're executing the events, always remember you are a brand within a brand. So represent yourself accordingly. Bye. Mm -hmm.